Namaskar and welcome to Express News. Let's begin. An auspicious Hindu festival, Ram Navmi, was celebrated across India and the world on Wednesday. Prime Minister Narendra Modi greeted the people and said that his heart is filled with joy and gratitude on this sacred occasion. India's President Draupadi Murmu greeted citizens on the occasion of Ram Navmi. President Murmu asked the citizens to imbibe the values of Lord Sri Ram. Surya Tilak illuminates Ram Lalla's forehead at the Ram Janabhumi Temple. Prime Minister Narendra Modi watched the visuals of the Surya Tilak ceremony. Prime Minister Narendra Modi addressed a public rally at Nalbadi in the northeastern state of Assam. The Prime Minister said that he made efforts for peace and security in the region. Prime Minister Narendra Modi addresses a public rally in Tripura's Agartala as well, and he said that the Northeast plays a major role in making India viksit or developed. The Congress leader Rahul Gandhi and the Samajwadi Party chief Akhilesh Yadav held a press conference on Wednesday in Ghaziabad, Uttar Pradesh. At the press conference, Congress leader Rahul Gandhi said that the India bloc and the Congress party are trying to defend and protect the constitution and democracy. Congress leader Priyanka Gandhi Vadra holds a roadshow in Saharanpur in Uttar Pradesh. The Congress leader Rahul Gandhi holds a public meeting in Mandya in Karnataka and he said that the Congress is going to give jobs to the unemployed youth. The Aam Aadmi Party launched a website named Aapka Ram Rajya to showcase the party's works during, being done inspired by Ram Rajya in Delhi and Punjab. West Bengal Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee led the Trinamool Congress, uh, that's the party that she leads, on Wednesday. They released their manifesto for the upcoming Lok Sabha polls. The Biju Janata Dal on Wednesday announced its fifth list of candidates for the Odisha Assembly elections 2024. The Chief Minister, Naveen Patnaik, will contest from Kantambajni Assembly seat. Himachal Pradesh, the Union Minister Anurag Thakur offers prayers at the Sri Ma Chintpurni Temple in Una in Himachal Pradesh on the ninth day of Navratri. Naxalites, 29 of them, were killed in an encounter in Kanker district in the central Indian state of Chhattisgarh. This happened Tuesday. Three security personnel were injured in the incident. On the Kanker encounter, the Union Home Minister Amit Shah said that since 2014, the BJP government has announced, in fact, it has launched continuous campaign against Naxals and terrorism. The passing out parade of 427 Agnivir soldiers of the third batch of the Agnipat scheme was held at the Parachute Regiment Training Center in Bengaluru on Wednesday. General Manoj Pandey, who is the chief of the Indian Army, inaugurated a high-tech IT laboratory at the Uzbek Academy of Armed Forces. Rescue and search operation is underway in Gandbal, Naugam area of Srinagar as six people died after a boat capsized in the Jhelum River on Tuesday. A fire broke out at a residential property located in Delhi's Harinagar on Wednesday. Two fire tenders were dispatched to the scene and they engaged in extinguishing the flames. Ten people died after a car rammed into a trailer in Nandiyad. The incident took place on the Ahmedabad Vadodara Expressway on Wednesday. On to business news. The UN Trade and Development, uh, UNCTAD, they have released a report where they said that India's economy is projected to grow by 6.5% in 2024. The International Monetary Fund has increased India's growth forecast for 2024 in its World Economic Outlook report, India's growth projection is 6.8% from the previous forecast of 6.5%. Gold futures maturing on June 5 stood at rupees 72,999 per 10 grams on the MCX. 
Silver futures maturing on May 3rd, 2024 are retailing at Rs. 83,480 per kg on the MCX. U.S. stocks ended lower in choppy trading on Tuesday as Treasury yields climbed. The S&P 500 index fell 10.41 points to close at 5,051. Inflation in the UK fell to its lowest level in two and a half years in March amid further easing in food prices. Asian shares were trading mixed on Wednesday. Japan's benchmark Nikkei 225 dipped 0.5% in afternoon trading. Oil prices extended losses on Wednesday as Brent futures for June slipped 56 cents to $89.46 per barrel. The Reserve Bank of India issued a new draft guideline for payment aggregator platforms to further strengthen the growing payment ecosystem. Adidas shares have risen to a two-year high after the company raised its full-year guidance for 2024. The gross margin of Adidas improved to 51% from 45%. International News Israel's war cabinet is expected to convene again on Wednesday to determine its course of action in response to Iran's first-time direct assault on Israeli territory. Israeli Foreign Minister Israel Kantz has held a crisis diplomacy talk with the German Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock and also the British Foreign Secretary David Cameron in Jerusalem on Wednesday. The British Foreign Secretary David Cameron highlighted the uh, united front for Israel after Iran had launched a barrage of drones and missiles on Israel last weekend. Iran's President Ibrahim Riasi issued a cautionary statement pledging a robust and substantial retaliation to any Israeli aggression that violates Iranian sovereignty. Russia is actively engaging in dialogue with both Iran and Israel, emphasizing the imperative need for de-escalation in the West Asian region. Amid mounting tensions in West Asia, Qatar stated that discussions for a ceasefire in Gaza and the release of captives are at a delicate stage. UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, in a telephonic conversation with his Israeli counterpart Binyamin Netanyahu, advocated for restraint amid the ongoing conflict in the region. The United States is preparing to enforce fresh sanctions targeting Iran's missile and drone initiatives in the coming days. The National Security Advisor of the United States, Jake Sullivan, underscored Washington's ongoing efforts to bolster integration of air and missile defense systems across West Asia to diminish Iran's missile capabilities. EU's foreign policy chief Joseph Borrell said that Brussels is initiating efforts to expand sanctions against Iran following its attack on Israel. More international news amid escalating tensions in West Asia, a prominent Hezbollah leader, Ismail Baz, Along with three others, they were killed in an Israeli airstrike on Lebanon. G7 foreign ministers are convening in Italy in Capri. This is to discuss the potential imposition of sanctions on Iran. The Republican-led U.S. House of Representatives is set to vote this week on advancing a long-delayed national security funding package aimed at supporting Israel, Ukraine and other American allies. After two days of jury selection, the initial seven jurors were chosen on Tuesday to serve in Donald Trump's trial concerning hush money payments. Donald Trump criticized the judge presiding over his New York criminal trial repeatedly labeling him as conflicted and asserting that he should not be overseeing the case. U.S. President Joe Biden began a multi-city tour of Pennsylvania, beginning with a visit to his hometown of Scranton. Voting commenced in Croatia for the nation's parliamentary elections. 
with polls indicating that Prime Minister Andrzej Blinkovich's Conservative Party might lose its majority due to corruption scandals. The Solomon Islands held its national election on Wednesday, marking the first election since Prime Minister Manasa Sogavare forged a security agreement with China in 2022. British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak's proposal to prohibit people aged 15 and under from buying cigarettes passed its initial parliamentary vote on Tuesday, following approval from the UK House of Commons. The bill passed a parliamentary vote in the UK with 383 votes in favour and 67 against, advancing to the next stage where it could undergo amendments. Weather-related news, the United States has provided assurances requested by the High Court in London to pave the way for WikiLeaks's founder Julian Assange to be extradited from Britain. Myanmar's detained ex-leader Su Chi has been moved from prison to house arrest as a health measure due to an intense heat wave. Heavy thunderstorms swept across the United Arab Emirates on Tuesday, leading to significant flooding in Dubai. Dubai police issued a public safety advisory. Residents in Dubai used a rubber boat to move around the flooded streets. Dubai International Airport was temporarily diverting arriving flights until weather conditions improved. The UAE's meteorological department stated that another wave of unstable weather was expected to begin from Wednesday. Uh, this is on the western areas. Three agricultural buildings were severely damaged by the tornado that traveled for 9.5 to 11 kilometers in Iowa and the United States. The tornado warnings have been issued in Iowa. A heat wave is hitting Mexicans as the capital surpassed the 1998 mark on Monday by reaching a maximum temperature of 34.2 degrees Celsius. A volcano erupted several times in Indonesia's North Sulawesi province overnight on Wednesday. At least 800 people have been evacuated from the area. Coral bleaching afflicts most of Australia's famed Great Barrier Reef, according to a report on Wednesday. Coral bleaching was observed on 73% of the surveyed reefs. Heavy rains and flash floods have swept parts of the Gulf region. Royal Oman Police released a video which showed police aviation airlifting people and taking them to safety from gushing flood water. The India Meteorological Department has issued heat wave alert in several states across the country till April 20. The Odisha government has announced the closure of schools for three days due to a heat wave on Wednesday. <clears throat> Ram Navmi, the birthday celebrations of Lord Ram, is being celebrated with religious fervor across India despite the heat. The festivities which fall on the ninth day of the Chaitra month mark Lord Ram's birth. Devotees thronged in large numbers to get a glimpse of the deity in the newly built Ram temple in Uttar Pradesh's Ayodhya. On the auspicious occasion of Ram Navmi, Sudarshan Patnaik, the renowned sand artist hailing from Odisha, unveiled a breathtaking sand sculpture depicting Lord Ram. Devotees strong Mata Vaishno Devi Temple in Katra of Jammu and Kashmir on the occasion of Ram Navmi. The temple was beautifully decorated with flowers as it is considered one of the holiest pilgrimages for Hindus in India. Coral reefs around the world are turning a ghostly white amid record warm ocean temperatures. Severe coral bleaching has been reported in at least 54 countries and territories. While they cover less than 1% of the ocean floor, they offer outsized benefits for marine ecosystems. The number of rare spotted seals in northeast China's Liadong Bay a crucial breeding zone has surged to a record-breaking 393 this year due to persistent conservation efforts by professionals and volunteers. <clears throat> the Wubangdung tomb, excavated in East China's Anhui province, 
has been confirmed as the largest and the highest level tomb from ancient Chu state dating back to over 2,200 years. Covering a total area of some 1.5 million square meters, the millennia-old mausoleum includes a main tomb, a rectangle chariot and horse pit accompanying tombs and sacrificial pits. With surging poverty in Afghanistan, women are turning to old age traditions of carpet weaving, sewing and embroidery to earn a living, especially in the northern province of Badakhshan. Animal rights advocates in Colombia, they've staged a performance with flares and red paint on Tuesday to call on legislatures to debate a law that would ban bullfighting in the country. A Vietnamese farm located in the Mekong Delta has successfully exported its first shipment of organic coconut flour nectar products to Australia, the fifth main importer of the local locality's products. In a nature reserve on the outskirts of Russia's former imperial capital, volunteers are helping thousands of toads to cross a sun-dappled road so that they can reach their, spa their spawning grounds. Hollywood actor Zendaya and the stars of the new film Challengers walked its red carpet premiere in Los Angeles on Tuesday. Ahead of Earth Day, a giant installation made of plastic waste was installed in New York City's High Line Park. Artist and activist Benjamin Von Wong uh, created the sculpture to highlight the single-use plastic pollution problem and inspire behavioral change. The captivating South Korean drama series Queen of Tears dominated the weekly Netflix Global Top 10 TV chart in the non-English category, garnering over 4.4 million views in the past week. The British actor Idris Elba joined the cast and crew of the upcoming Sonic and Hedgehog spin-off series uh, Knuckles at the world premiere in London on Tuesday. Knuckles will be released uh, to US and Canadian audiences on streaming platform Paramount Plus on April 26. The six-part series follows the story of animated warrior Knuckles, voiced by Elba. Rio de Janeiro is preparing to welcome music lovers eager to see pop superstar Madonna in what will be a massive free tour closing concert at the Copacabana Beach next month. One million people are expected to attend pop superstar Madonna's concert on May 4. That will mark the end of her celebration tour, which kicked off last October. The sequel to the female force Taylor Swift is set to hit shelves on April 24th. The Tidal Wave comics de delivering an engaging narrative that delves deeper into the pop superstar's philanthropic endeavors. The 22-page story will be available in both soft and hardcover versions with a unique cover crafted by renowned Marvel Comics artist Pablo Matenena. And this is the cover. It features Taylor Swift with her beloved cats. <clears throat> a new documentary about uh, Canadian songs stress Celine Dion's struggle with, uh, with, a medical, with a medical condition which has made it difficult for her to perform is set to hit screens on June. Uh, it's going to happen in June this year. A first look image at I Am Celine Dion documentary showcasing the 56-year-old singer's struggle with a rare neurological disorder. It was released on Tuesday. Actors Rachel Zegler, Zegler I beg pardon, and Kit Connor will be making their Broadway debut in the modern-day adaptation of Romeo and Juliet that premieres to cater to the TikTok generation. This stage adaptation is one of many retellings of the beloved play taking place this year. Actors Tom Holland and Francesca Amebuda Rivers leading a separate production of the play in London over the summer. Some sports news now. Manchester City are ready to 
host Real Madrid in the return leg of their Champions League quarterfinal tonight. Arsenal are ready for battle against Bayern Munich in the return leg of their Champions League quarterfinal today. A Joss Butler show stole the show at the, with a last ball thriller, in fact, as Rajasthan Royals beat uh, Kolkata Knight Riders by a slender two wickets on Tuesday. Mumbai Indians will take on Punjab Kings in the 33rd match of the IPL 2024 on Thursday. The countdown for the Paris Olympics 2024 begins as the torch for the Paris 2024 Olympic Games was lit in the ancient Olympia in a traditional ceremony. Borussia Dortmund stormed into the Champions League semi-finals with a rip-roaring 4-2 home win over Atletico Madrid in the second leg. Kylian Mbappe scored twice as PSG beat 10-man Barcelona to reach the Champions League semi-finals. All eyes are on leader Gukesh as the 11th round of the candidates 2024 resumes in Toronto later today. Rafael Nadal beat Flavio Caboli at the Barcelona Open on Tuesday in his first tournament since January. The Indian men's hockey team is poised for an exhilarating quest with just 100 days remaining until the start of their journey to the Paris Olympics. And that's all we have in Express News. Thank you very much for watching. Namaskar.